Hey there guys, welcome to the meat shop. In this episode, we're gonna go over how to make hot dogs. You guys requested it a bunch in the comments, so you know, you ask and you shall receive. So this video is gonna be uh, how to make hot dogs, what's in them, what's the process, how can you make them at home. I'll give you all that stuff. The recipe will be in the video and the link below. So if you enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe and uh, we'll make some hot dogs. All right guys, welcome to the hot dog making video. You got a bunch of requests, like I mentioned for this. Uh, you know, some of you guys wanted to make, you know, they said your grandpa used to make hot dogs, big steaming red hot, juicy guys in the store. Uh, some of you guys just wanted to know what was in a hot dog. Some of you guys uh, wanted to be able to make your own hot dogs because you don't trust store hot dogs. Uh, and so this video is gonna be the how to make hot dogs. Um, I don't know where to even start with the hot dog. You know, there's so much, so much, uh, what would you call it even? Stigma around it, I guess, you know? Everything from they scrape the stuff off the floor and throw it in the hot dogs to it's made out of eyeballs and you know what. Um, I love hot dogs. I like the cheap, cheap hot dogs. I think they're awesome. Uh, I, like, I like all hot dogs, they're great. Uh, hot dogs, I think, originally uh, originated in Germany, Frankfurt. That's where the Frankfurter comes from. Um, this here is going to be a little bit different. This is going to be kind of an American style hot dog. You know, it, the, I would say the f hot dog might have originated in Germany, but it's now American. The hot dog is hugely, hugely popular. It's got to be the number one most sold and made thing in uh, meat product in America. Um, the reason it kind of gets a bad rap, I think sometimes, because it, it's, a, it's a sausage that the, whatever you want to call it, the butchers have engineered the max amount of profit out of. So with some of those really, really cheap hot dogs, you know, you do have only about this much meat and the rest is skin and water and, uh, you know, you get some fillers and binders and other proteins and things in there. So uh, in an emulsification with phosphates, so you can have just a little bit of meat and quite a bit more other things, especially when you have multi-species multi because they can use 10% ammonia washed uh, meat in the hot dog. So if you have pork, if you flip the label over and it says pork, chicken, beef in the ingredients, that means they have 10% ammonia washed trim stuff that they've, I, I went over this in my, in how to pick meat for sausage video. They got that in each one of those and pork skin and as much fat as they're allowed. So they're not the healthiest for you. I wouldn't eat hot dogs every single, I wouldn't eat 99 cent hot dog packs every day of the week. But this is not gonna be that hot dog. This is gonna be the hot dog that I make from my store. It's called the Lean Beef Hot Dog. Um, it's gonna be all beef, but you could use anything. Like I said, the, the big guys, they use pork, chicken, and beef all in the same hot dog sometimes. But you could use chicken for this, you could use veal for this, you could use venison for this, you could use pork, you could use beef. Uh, it's really, it's great, super, uh, super flavorful. And uh, I'm gonna grab the meat and show you right now. All right guys, so I just had this in the freezer a little bit, uh, cause I'm gonna run mine through the bowl cutter, which I'll go over in a second. But here's the meat. Uh, I just did, it's a double ground, so First time on a 10 millimeter plate, second time on a three millimeter plate. Um, and I got a video of that. Hopefully I can figure out how to get it in here and I'll show you.
that didn't work, I apologize. <laughs> but here it is guys, I got three kgs of lean ground beef. Uh, this stuff's gonna be for me, so I put just a little extra fat in it because I want them just a little bit juicier. But uh, making a hot dog, you can have anywhere from 15% fat to 30% fat, I say is a good window. Uh, that's kind of a general rule for most sausages, but I wouldn't want any less than 15% fat in the hot dog. Um, so, you, you know, before we get into this, guys, I'll give you this, this process. So I had uh, some meat trim. My meat trim was made out of, it was really nice stuff. It was actually, uh, we cut a bunch of steaks up, so it was ribeye ends, strip, strip loin ends, uh, top sirloin ends from last week, and we saved the back fat, so it's three beautiful cuts of meat just the ends, you know, and trimmings off those and some uh, back fat off the beef. Um, but you can just get some lean ground from your butcher or if you've been saving up, if you've been smoking briskets at home and you've been saving the brisket ends, squaring them up, saving the brisket fat, all that stuff works good for this. You know, pork shoulders, uh, if you've got some beef fat and venison, you want to add them together, it'll work fine for these hot dogs. Um, so that's the meat. Uh, next, the process is gonna be, I ground them, like I said, then you're going to, uh, if you don't have a bowl cutter or a food processor at home, what I would suggest is running it through the finest plate you have a couple more times, because really, a hot dog is just a sausage, but it's, it's an emulsified sausage. So it's got a very, very fine texture. Uh, the meat and the fat are cut so small that they look like a paste, and they really bind well together because that uh, all the surface area, the faces of the protein are more exposed so that when the binding process happens, uh, the protein extraction happens more easily. So the hot dogs are gonna stick, get real, be a real sticky paste. And I'm gonna show you that in the bowl cutter, but if you don't have a bowl cutter, you don't have a food processor, just run it through your grinder a couple times so they start to look, so it starts to look like one texture. But always keep your meat cold. You don't want to run it through your meat grinder and get your meat up to room temperature. Then it's going to have, you're going to have smeary fat. You don't want that. So keep it cold, pop it back in the freezer, run it through again, pop it back in the freezer, run it through again. So we're going to chop it. Uh, I'm going to add the seasonings in the bowl cutter, get that emulsification, and then we're going to stuff it. Um, I'm going to forewarn you guys, after you make this once, you might go, wow, 99 cent hot dogs are maybe worth it because this is a labor of love this is it's a lot of work to make homemade hot dogs uh it's either hot dogs you know or you make them for yourself at home or the big guys do it there's no real in between i make hot dogs for the store but they're they're a lot of work mostly because i don't have an automated linker on this stuffer or on that stuffer the big big plants have automated linkers so as they're coming out of the stuffing horn, they get spun nine times and then spun nine times the other way and that keeps these cellulose casings which we're going to use from unwinding. We don't have automated linkers so you're going to have to tie every individual one with string or hog rings so it takes a lot of time. All that being said, I have the meat pre-ground, I got the bowl, pro bowl cutter ready to go, I better give you guys the recipe. Like I said, hot dogs originated in Frankfurt, Germany probably roughly, um, but these are gonna be American hot dogs. So the main ingredients in a hot dog are salt, white pepper, garlic, and paprika, and cure, and smoke. That's basically what constitutes a hot dog. You can put those things into some beef, pork, chicken, and you'll have a hot dog tasting sausage. Um, you can add stuff from there, like mine has a little bit of onion powder, it has a little bit of sugar. Um, actually, I'll just give you the, the recipe. Salt, 15 grams per kilogram. White pepper, two and a half grams per kilogram. I use a very fine ground white pepper, it's like a dust. Uh, sugar, three grams per kilogram. Paprika, one gram per kilogram. Garlic powder, 1.5 grams per kilogram. Onion powder, half a gram per kilogram. Cure accelerator, which is sodium erythrobate or ascorbic acid, acid, half a gram per kilogram. Cure, three grams per kilogram. And I'm gonna use a binder, which is soy protein in these uh, at 10 grams per kilogram. You don't have to use it if you mix long enough or you have a bowl cutter and it, mixes, and it cuts it up into emulsification that binds real well, you don't have to use that. Then I use ice at uh, 
20%. I usually use ice or water at 10%. With emulsification, it's going to hang on to a little bit of wa more water than normal. Uh, so I put a little extra in to keep them just a little more juicy. So 20%, so that's what we're using. 20% is 200 milliliters or 200 grams of ice. And, uh, and that's, the, that's my sausage recipe. Of course, you guys can play with it. If you want to put a little nutmeg in, if you want to put a little allspice in, or you want to put jalapeno powder in or something cool like that, you most definitely can. But that's mine. I got the spices pre-mixed up. I'm going to head over to the bowl cutter. We'll fire it up and uh, get our emulsification started. All right, guys, this is the bowl cutter. So at this step, if you don't have this, I don't expect many of you guys to have a hobby bowl cutter because they're pretty expensive. But you could swap out a food processor and just do a couple handfuls at a time, whatever your food processor can handle, or like I said, run it through the grinder a couple times. But uh, in case you haven't seen some of the other videos where I use this, how this beast functions is it's got two blades here and this bowl spins. So, oh, I better do it so you guys can see it. So as uh, the bowl is spinning, these blades are chopping and you see they get very close to the bowl. So that's gonna slice even these small little bits of ground into tinier, tinier pieces where you're gonna get even more protein extraction out of them. So like in those 99 cent hot dogs, they emulsify them, they run them through actually like these hopper designed systems where the meat cannot pass through until it gets to a small, small texture. And that way they create as much surface area as possible for that protein extraction and then they can optimize the amount of water, the amount of fat, the amount of skin they can put in. But I, like I said, I don't do that. I'll, I'll maybe one day make, if you guys want to see that, let me know how to make scary hot dogs or whatever you want to call them, commercial hot dogs. But I'm going to add the meat, fire it up. It's going to be real loud here for a couple seconds, guys. Uh, I'm going to blend it until it turns to a fine paste or hits 11 degrees Celsius, whatever comes first. I think I'm just going to go till I like them today because these ones are for me. So I don't have to follow the rules if I don't want to. But the rule is uh, you, you got to stop after 11 uh, because one, you raise them up above five degrees Celsius, which is the health and safety rules. You, after that, it's supposed to be in the fridge or taken and cooked. Um, and after 11, the bind starts to break. It's tough to keep the bind. So that's, that's what we're shooting for. Here we go, I'm gonna get started. Okay, guys, that sucker's loud, so <laughs> I'm gonna let him go for a couple minutes here. And obviously, you wanna keep your fingers out of there. I'm just gonna add my spices now, and that, those knives are gonna blend them in for me. I'm just doing this to prevent big balls from forming and plugging up the machine. And it's already starting to turn to that paste texture. Happens pretty quick. Uh-oh. Too much. Too much in the bowl cutter. Got to reset it. All right, got that safety switch reset. This is only, uh, I can only get two kgs in here, so four and a half pounds. I pushed it with six. Uh, so even hot dogs for the butcher is a labor of love. I need a bigger bowl cutter to get serious about this hot dog making. 
So what I'm gonna do then is, uh, I guess I'm gonna do it kind of like how you guys would do it in the blender. I'm gonna split this batch in half and uh, run it through the emulsifier, the bowl cutter here, and uh, show you guys the finished product when it's done. Let you guys watch. And so I guess I'm gonna have to take, normally what I like to do though, guys, is I like to add the ice to it while it's blending. I'm gonna have to mix it into the sausage by hand since it's, uh, it can't handle the big load there, so. So there's the meat, here's the ice. Would have liked to do it in the bowl cutter. I guess it's not even really that big of a load, but for my little bowl cutter, my little unit, it's all she can take. So I'm just gonna mix that ice in. I mix the spice in, so it should be evenly distributed at this point. And just split her in half. And we'll run it through the bowl cutter again. Okay, here we go, round two. All right, guys, like I said, yeah, I'm just gonna let it go for a couple minutes till it gets to a real fine paste. The little bits of ice is starting to disappear. <laughs> I just had a thought if I drop a camera in there, that wouldn't be very good. All right, guys, have a look at that. That's starting to look like quite the fine paste here. Let's see, the temperature is Celsius. So I'm pretty happy with the temperature, or with the uh, consistency, and it's right at that 11 degrees anyway, so I'm gonna pull this out and do the other half. Yum. These are our future hot dogs. All right. All right, round two, we'll let her spin. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that texture again there, guys. See how all the, you can't see the difference between the fat and the meat anymore. If you're at home doing this on a blender, you might have gone insane by now. There we go, loud machine. All right, so if you guys did that at home, that was probably quite the time consuming process, but you'll have homemade hot dogs that you know exactly what's in them, you can trust them and they're gonna be good. Uh, so what's next is the stuffing process. Again, you know, you're shooting for a real fine paste. You can't see the difference between the fat and the meat. And uh, we're gonna load them into 22 millimeter cellulose casings. So that's cellulose, not collagen. Uh, I got a how to pick sausage casings video or how to pick casings for making sausage or something like that. And these guys are not edible. They're smoke permeable. So you're gonna get that smoke flavor in the sausage. So uh, we're gonna stuff it into these, tie every single link and then smoke them, give them an ice bath and then they will be peeled off before we eat them. So that's a cellulose 22 millimeter casing. And you can get them all sorts of sizes. Uh, you can get them in eight, like small as 18. You probably won't any smaller than 18 for a hot dog. It'd be really small, up to like a 28 or a 30 millimeter if you want a big one. Also, at this step, I'm using cellulose uh, because I like casing free so, uh, hot dogs, but you could use a sheep casing, a 22 millimeter sheep casing. Uh, they're very delicate, you have to be careful with them, but you could use that a natural sheep casing instead of these if you wanted to right now. What uh, 
I'm going to do next is I'm going to load this into the stuffer. And as with all sausages, you get a handful and you work it in there. Try and get all the air pockets out because you can't prick these ones. You can prick natural casings and stuff, but these ones, they will just explode. Well, not like boom, wreck your inside of your smokehouse explode, but they will pop and that nice emulsification you just worked so hard for will end up on the floor of your smokehouse. So I'll get it loaded and then we'll stuff. All right, guys, so here's the cellulose casings. They're just like the pepperoni casing or the breakfast sausage casing. You just peel it off and sleeve it on your horn. Or if your horn is big enough, you can just slide that hole right over the horn. Unfortunately, mine's not big enough, so I had to feed it on there, which I did in advance. But with these guys, what you want to do, squeeze the end quite hard. These guys are very, fairly difficult to break, I should say. So you don't got to worry about squeezing too hard on the horn. But let that first little bit come out, pinch it, and make sure it gets nice and let the first little bit go out, keeping quite a bit of pressure on it. And squeeze pretty hard on these guys. You know, you can break them, don't squeeze too hard. It's gonna to screw off into the table. But you wanna get them good and full because, you know, unlike a natural casing, they're not gonna break. You don't have to soak these in water either, by the way. I just put these on dry. Um, but when we get to the tying stage, you're going to see that uh, having them full is going to be to our benefit. Very full. Oh, I did break it there. Okay. Load another one on the horn. You guys can see I broke it. I broke it there. It's because it was at a sideways angle and I started stuffing. My fault. I'll load that back in there though. All right, reload it on and we'll just carry on. Nice and tight. And do it again. Okay, there we go. We found the end of it. Perfect amount of casing. Okay guys, so I have pre-cut a bunch of butcher twine in about six inch, five inch pieces. Can you see that? Can't see that. All right, because right now we just got really long, what look like kind of pepperoni sticks. And if you try to twist them, you know, do about six inch hot dogs or whatever. One, two, three. And then you even do the other one the other way. One, two, three. They're going to unwind. And you see here, it's kind of loose there and it's loose there. When this sausage starts cooking in the smokehouse, guys, it's going to expand and push into the other one. You're just going to have one big long hot dog. So unfortunately, I haven't found a way around this yet. I twist them up and then I tie them. Take my string and you're gonna have to tie every single one of them. Because I've seen other guys do like the tree linking method, the European method, where you do, uh, you do two and you go through around and you have another loop and then you come up through around, do another loop. But the problem with that is when you're smoking sausages, guys, so there's basically three of them sitting together like this kind of thing, if you can see that. The middle of the sausages, this inside of the sausage surface area is not going to get air. It's not going to get smoke. So you're going to have like a real red mahogany cherry outside and then you'll have like a pale strip on the inside. Not only that, but the inside, if you got three hung up like this, might take, might not rise to temperature at the same time. So you might probe the middle of the sausage, but the inside here is below the fully cooked temperature. So this is the way I do them. You can do the tree style, but you want to make sure you can get that air circulation around somehow. The European style of linking, I should say, but I'm just going to keep twisting and tying. And I guess I should say, show you guys at some point, you know, See how I, I had these squeezed real tight? Let's bring it in for you. 
and you got like these little soft spots. Whoops, got these little soft spots. Despite I had it real tight on there. So what you do here, guys, is is when it's loose like that there. You basically kind of just pinch and bring up some sausage and that gets it filled up. And you go to the next one, do the same thing, and you twist them. See how there's that little bit there? Twist them till that kind of loops over on itself and they're close together and they're, each one of those is going to be tight now. And you just tie it to lock it. And it don't matter what kind of knot you do, I just do a double knot because we're gonna cut all these and take off all the skins when we're done. So guys, I don't think you wanna watch me do all of these. So I'm just gonna tie them all like that and then show you when I'm done. Okay there guys, so there's our hot dogs. I just kinda of wanted to say, uh, you don't wanna pull that string too hard. Otherwise, at these joints here, when it cooks and it expands, the camera will work with me, it will break. Um, and also what I usually do is I left a little chub here. This is a good one to probe with your thermometer. So if you probe one of these guys as it cooks, it's going to split and break. But there you go, guys. There's a bunch of them twisted up. Next, I'll hang them up in the smokehouse and we'll take you through the smoke cycle. All right there, guys. I got the smokehouse loaded up with hot dogs. I got some stuff for my store in there too. But here they are. And you see how I got them all spaced out so air can circulate all the way through them. Uh, these guys here are the lean beef hot dogs. And back here is what we call Coney Island Franks. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to hit them at 150 for about an hour. And then we're going to crank it up to probably 160 for the smoking process. And then add a little bit of humidity and turn the smokehouse up to 185 and just about steam them. They're going to go from this kind of gray cured meat color to a nice, you know, cherry red. And then we're going to give these guys an ice bath. And uh, I got the probe in there, deep inside one of these hot dogs back there. And uh, we're going to cook them to an internal temperature of 160 degrees, 71 degrees Celsius. So they are ready to eat fully cooked hot dogs. So I'll, uh, I'll show you guys again when, uh, when the smokehouse goes off and these guys are done. All right, so the internal temperature has just hit 160 on the hot dogs that we put in earlier. I'm gonna kill the smokehouse. Open her up, you see the steam coming out of there. And look at those nice cherry red hot dogs. And what I'm gonna do from here, guys, I'm gonna take these guys and put them right into this ice bath. So I'm gonna get the camera set up to do that right now. Okay guys, so you want to get them into the water relatively quickly because if you don't, they're, they're nice and plump and juicy right now. If you don't, they're going to start to wrinkle and stuff. And uh, you basically have to give these guys an ice bath or at least a cold water shower. Because if you don't, it's going to wrinkle and that cellulose casing that we got on there is going to be very difficult to peel off the next day. We're going to peel all these... Um, the next day. It's definitely best if they're cold. If you try and peel them right now, maybe I'll show you one here. Here's one of the other hot dogs. If you try and peel them, you end up with it kind of ripping the outside of the the skin off. So you definitely want to cool them down first. I can't even get this guy started here. See, it's, oh, this guy's going to be okay. Make a liar out of me. But uh, it's definitely easier to peel when they're cold though. They'll just slip right off. Oh, see, there you go. That guy's stuck and ended up breaking them, but better eat it. Yum. Yum. So anyway, guys, just a couple minutes in the ice bath. And then I'll dump that water out and we'll stick them in the cooler, zero to five degrees Celsius overnight and peel them for you tomorrow morning. And there's a big tub of the store hot dogs, the Coney Island Franks in melted ice water. All right, guys. It's the next day, we're at the final step of this hot dog making process. So I let these guys chill out in the cooler overnight uh, between zero and five degrees Celsius. And uh, you know, they don't look as plump as they do when they come right out of the smokehouse. Everything always looks the best when they come right out of the smokehouse. But we gave them <clears throat> the water bath and that definitely stopped the cooking. You know, it took, uh, there's just a little bit of wrinkles in them and that's kind of inevitable. And now what you guys got to do 
is, I just cut between every little um, string we tied there yesterday. And you just, I'll come in closer for this. Okay, we got our hot dogs, you got that top little flat part. And if you guys have ever bought bulk wieners in the store, I don't know if they still have these anywhere. In Canada, they got rid of them, but you just take it. Oh, let me focus on the right thing here. And you just peel that casing off. And you got yourself your own hot dog, homemade hot dog with, you know exactly what's in it. You know exactly the fat ratio. It's not full of sugars and salts. So I'm just gonna peel these guys one by one. Like I said, hot dogs are kind of a labor of love. These are pretty good, though it is worth it just to make your own hot dogs at least once. And this way you don't, you know, like I said, you know exactly what's in them. And maybe one day uh, we'll make a, a commercial hot dog or an eyeballs and buttholes hot dog for you, just so you know how they're made. I don't make those in the shop. So, I'll peel these, and then uh, we'll wrap this hot dog making video up. All right there guys, so we got them all peeled. That's the end of the hot dog video. You guys know how to cook hot dogs from here. There they are, the plump little all beef wieners. You know exactly what's in them. So, if you guys like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe, and we'll make you more sausage and meat videos.